Hey, this is another quick speed shop. Check it out. I got my C10 in the shop. I'm working on some electrical gremlins under the hood. Put some new battery cables on it. Formulating a game plan to get this thing ready to tear down for the restoration. I got some facts and figures. I'll show you the parts and pieces I need. Am I already over budget? Well, you probably know the answer to that, but let's uh, see what this thing turns into. So I'm going to start off today with a C10 working on the battery. I hate side terminal batteries. They're stupid. I don't know why General Motors ever came up with them and other people that use them. Where'd my battery, where'd my battery uh, wrench go? I just had it. It's lost. Dang it. Maybe I took it out of the truck already. There it is. I don't know why anybody would like side terminal batteries. They're stupid. They're hard to get the things on you. Sometimes you strip the threads out. It's hard to uh, jump them with jumper cables. It's a whole bunch of nonsense. So this battery is, I think, only a couple of years old. Uh, but I've been disconnecting it and reconnecting it every time I, I use it. And that's getting to be a pain because I don't trust this truck to, to not eat the battery or whatever. So I want to put a disconnect on it. And also the ground cable is about shot here, the, the side, toast, side post terminal ground cable. So I have some parts somewhere. Where are they? I ordered one of these uh, kill switches. I put these on every single vehicle I got because they're a good anti-theft device. And they also make it so you can disconnect the power. I shut off the power every single time I leave a vehicle because there's less chance of a draw. There's less chance of a fire or electrical short or anything, I always disconnect the power on all my vehicles. And I bought these on Summit Racing. Uh, right here, they're Quick Car Racing Products switches. I think they're rated for 300 amps. And the race car switches. And they come with a aluminum Quick Car panel. So you can put the master disconnect switch actually through here, you know, like on and off. and. I'm not going to put the panel on it, but I was looking on, on a vehicle that's not a race car. You can put these and interrupt the negative terminal. Like on the positive terminal, I've got, it goes right to the starter, but then I've got this wire that goes to the alternator for the charging harness. So if I interrupt it here, say I'm out of here in the fender well, and I go there to the starter and interrupt the power, I've still got the charging cable hooked up. So if this is running and say there is a fire and I want to shut the power off to it, I turn the key off and say the keys burned or whatever. I want to shut the car off. I'd shut the switch off. If you don't have the, ch if the charging switch is going not through the switch, the alternator could keep the engine running and keep burning the fire versus, uh, if you had it on the negative side and had everything going through the negative side before anything else, you could disconnect the negative and shut the vehicle off. But that might not happen if something had shorted out the ground side of the battery. Say you got in a wreck and something was up against the battery and you had a fire. And if you had this going to the ground side, it could be shorted out and then your switch would be inoperable. So that's why race cars, they always put them on the positive side and they run everything through it. So the charger wire and everything would go through the switch first. That way, when you kill the positive switch, usually they're on the back of the car, you where the battery is in the trunk, you shut off the power immediately on the positive side, even though electricity flows negative to positive in these things. You shut off the power on the positive side, and then everything is dead, and there's no way the alternator can keep it running. So I got these switches. They come in different levels. I think these are rated at 250 or 300 amps, which this truck doesn't make anywhere near that amp bridge. It probably makes like 60. So... I like to do is set them somewhere accessible. You can mount them anywhere you want. Um, sometimes I've mounted them inside the vehicle. Sometimes mounted them. Uh, usually on trucks, I put them in the fender panel so you can just walk up when you're when you're leaving. You shut the key off. You shut the switch off. The switch would hang down under the fender panel. I've done that a lot. Just drill a hole in the inner fender. And mount the switch up like this. You go right to your cables. They're right there. Uh, it's not really an anti-theft device if you do that where you can see it real easily, but I use them more for fire. And if the somebody's not smart enough to get the hood open and they don't know that you got a switch in the fender well 
and they, you know, they're trying to hotwire it or whatever, they would probably miss the switch. So I'm just looking. I'll probably go here to the fender, like I said, because it's easy. I don't... Let me look under the dash real fast, but... Sometimes it's nice to have them inside where you can, where you can grab them, but you've got to run a longer battery cable when you do that. I think for the sake of this truck, I'm just going to, to uh, put it right somewhere in the fender well here, just for safety's sake. That way I can reach under the fender and go clunk, shut the fender, shut the battery off, and then turn it back on. And when keep in mind this truck when I get when I build it, it's going to be lowered four inches, so the tires are actually going to be pretty close to the wheel well. So you're not going to right now you could probably see the switch because there's such a gap between the tire and the fender. You're not going to see it once the thing is put together. I mean you could put it in the core support and then run a rod so you could reach it like through the hood or something but I'm not going to do that I'm just going to this is mainly for fire protection and battery draw this mounter in the inner fender probably right at the top yeah right there probably right there something like that actually oh the hood hinges has to close there probably right over here so what I did is I bought where'd they go I lost them I bought these converter deals from Die Hard bought them at the auto parts store and they make it so you can put regular battery cables on a uh, side terminal battery and once this battery I think is a couple years old I'm not really sure but uh, get out of there these just thread right in the battery and they're lead and that gives you a lug now that you can put a regular battery terminal on so eventually when this battery goes bad I'm going to put a top post terminal on battery on this and so I'm going to convert my cables over now to top post but I will use these dongle deals right there so this truck I'm going to do it not the uh, race car way I'm going to switch the negative side on and off which does the same thing but so I'm going to do is figure out right here where this negative cable is going to go and I'm going to put my switch right about here on the inner fender panel where I thought I, it would be a good thing. And then I'm going to switch the negative from here. It's going to go down to the frame. And then where this cable is, it's just about broke off. And then it's going to go from the frame. I'm also going to run a cable um, to the engine block uh, where the starter bolts on. One of the starter bolts. And I'm going to tie everything together. I've got a couple of cables I want to go and tie the battery to the switch, the switch to the frame, the frame to the engine, all with new cables. And then eventually I'm going to get a new uh, starter, or a new positive cable to go with the other uh, regular post style because this cable is uh, older too and run a new one down there. They just didn't have one at the auto parts store when I went looking. Can't find nothing at the auto parts store anymore. They're like, don't carry nothing. Like, they had like four battery cables. I had to like mix and match. And the guy's like, what? I don't know. Like stuff. It's, it's ridiculous. Okay, I got the ground cables tied in here. I ran one down to the, it's hard to see, but the back, one of the bolts on the starter. Then I made a common point up here in the frame. Got the one cable there. So we got, you know, to the grounding the engine out. And I used a factory cable clamp I found here on the frame. And then I brought the other cable up here to the negative switch and this fender uh, ground I gotta get a bigger eyelet I'm just gonna reattach that here so it'll ground the fender here can't have any too many grounds but we essentially have got the uh, the switch so this will interrupt the negative side so it's just like unhooking the negative side of the battery um, so now every time I drive the truck and I shut it off and go click kill the battery and there's no electric going through any of the truck Switch the handles down here under the wheel well. So you just reach under. Let's see if you can see. Reach under and turn the switch on. Turn the switch off. So let me uh, let's turn the switch on. I'll do, we'll demonstrate. So now it's on. Got the headlights on, right? Yep. Headlights, marker lights and all that and then since it's the negative side where is it come here boom kills the power to the truck dead 
So like I said, it's more for safety than anything else. This way I can leave the truck and there's no electrical draw on it whatsoever when the battery switches off. But we've got all new, all new grounding cables. The engine's grounded to the frame. The, tr the battery's grounded to the frame. And everything's good here. I also took the red wire for the alternator. I cleaned up the contacts over here, put some dielectric grease on them, and wrapped them up where they touch the core support with a piece of plastic loom so they're safer. I need to get a battery hold down to bolt down and clamp down this battery, but I'm going to measure the positive cable. I'm going to go on a parts run and try to find one of those after work tomorrow probably. I'll put a new positive cable on the guy right down to the starter, and then we'll have brand new battery cables. So when I was down there under the engine, I was under the truck. Somebody's worked on this a little bit. The transmission's painted black. It's cast iron, cast iron three-speed. Somebody had painted it black and needs a seal. The oil pan is a little scaly. There's some rust pitting on the oil pan, and uh, the oil, engine's leaking some oil. I actually found a connector burned off that I cut up and uh, cut off, and I taped up on the engine. Um, it's got the HEI distributor, and I, somebody ran a new power wire to that, and I think the old wires are the ones that used to go to the points or whatever. So I taped them up. When it, this truck is disassembled, I was looking underneath the cab, which you guys can't really see now, but it does need the cab mounts, front and rear, so probably strip all the front sheet metal off, take the doors and stuff off, get the uh, cab, do the cab mounts first, then work out like cab mounts, rocker panels, refit the doors to the rockers, that dialed in. The frame, I'm looking, the front suspension, I'm changing the control arm, I'm sorry, I'm changing the springs and the shocks and the uprights and all that to put the lowering kit on it, front and rear, all new springs and everything. I'm looking at the front control arms, they're kind of scaly, the ball joints are used. I'm going to look into, well, I got it apart. Here's where the money starts to add up. The stuff is reasonable for these trucks, but I got to look in. I'm probably, because of the bushings and the ball joints, it probably makes sense to buy all brand new control arms. So then all the suspension will be new. I'll run all new brake lines while I'm doing it. Have all new new suspension, new brake lines, you know, under the truck. Um, the frame is scaly, not real bad. I really wanted to get away with just like kind of cleaning it up and painting it with PR15 or something like that. It's going to be determined when we get some of the sheet metal stripped off. If I'm going to the point where I'm thinking about pulling the engine out now, for one thing, to paint the firewall when it to Hawaiian blue, but I could put a new oil pan on the engine when I got it apart. Probably won't do any internal parts. Uh, maybe we could do a timing chain. I don't know, because it's showing 70 on the odometer. It's probably 70 on the truck. Maybe it's 170. I don't know. I mean, the truck, who knows how many miles are on it. So it's either 70 or 170 or 270. Who knows? But um, the box is going to be off. The cab's going to be off, or the cab's going to be mostly off. i got to unbolt it to change the cab mounts anyways. I'm thinking maybe... Since I got all the suspension off and I got the cab unbolted, do I slide the frame out? Boop! Send it to the sand blaster real fast. Have him blast it and prime it. And then have a nice frame under it and new sheet metal. Nice painted frame. These trucks are worth it. These trucks are valuable. The Dodge, I know what it costs. It would cost me to blast and paint the frame. It's going to be 1200 bucks. So... Versus like hours wire wheeling it and getting it down and POR 15 like you know is not paint over rust like yeah if you live in California and paint over like surface California surface rust of POR 15 and then the truck's never driven in inclement weather yeah I guess it's all right but like if this truck has winter time on it I'm sure and scale and some rust in the seams to the frame and stuff if you POR 15 it after like wire wheeling it or descaling it. You're just band-aiding it. And you got the truck half apart. You know, I got the truck three quarters away apart. Like that Dodge. Is it easier just to whoop, slide the frame out, blast it, prime it, paint it, and then put all the new suspension on the new chassis or on the painted chassis? You know what I'm saying? So I got to do some thinking. I'm going to do some researching on the whoop. But it's late now. I got to go eat dinner. I want to see you, show you how 
to put a safety switch in real easy, a nice quality one, not them stupid green ones. But now it's easy to clunk clunk the battery from outside the truck. So everywhere I go now, like I said, all my vehicles, I have a cutoff switch. And everywhere I go, you know, it's, if I'm getting gas or something, I don't shut the battery off. But like I go in, especially stuff that's not computerized. I'm, I'm talking non-computerized vehicles that when you kill the power, it doesn't hurt nothing. Um, everywhere I go, like I said, clunk. It slows somebody down trying to steal it. It is really for fire prevention. You know, old old vehicles, old wiring, the battery's always shut off. It's really unlikely it's going to catch on fire on you, especially when you park it in the building. All my batteries are shut off in the cars in the buildings. So like nothing I got sits with power on it in the building. So like even this truck now, it's the battery's shut off now. So there's no chance they could catch on fire sitting in my garage, just sitting here like this. There's absolutely no way for electricity to flow through it. So that's why we did it. Okay, it's a couple days later. I finished the battery cable install here. I used the other adapter. I put a new positive cable on. That goes down to the starter. And I, just to keep it from rubbing on the inner fender, I went and I put some plastic glue around it. So you can see it down there on the starter. I still haven't got an, a big enough eyelet to put this one fender uh, ground on here, but I will. So now whenever, like I said, whenever this battery dies, simply unhook the, the two top post cables, get rid of the side terminal battery, then perp, get a battery with a positive here and a negative here top post, and bam, top post battery ready for install. So off camera, I've been doing some research and thinking and looking at parts and pieces. What do I need to do here? I got a hold of my uh, sandblasting guy that did all my work on the Dodge truck, and I'm going to have the frame sandblasted and primed because it's a little scalier than I wanted to do. And I think I talked about the front suspension. I'm going to replace the upper and lower control arms and new units, like fold all new ball joints, uh, all new. Uh, ball joints, cross shafts, and brand new stampings. Save on the blasting money on those and save their, their you know, by the time you rebuild them and everything, it's about $500 for a set of, set of fully loaded control arms. I'd probably have 250, 300 and redoing them. So, and I need to have the pitted original pieces, which, you know, six one half dozen the other. It's a lot easier just to bolt brand new ones on it is to spend all the time to try to rebuild them, try to get the cross shafts out of the ball joints. So I'm going to just uh, put a new new control arms on it. He's going to bead blast my, or uh, plastic media blast my stock doors. Um, I think they're pretty solid. He, he gave me a price to media blast the doors and then hit the bottom where they're scaly with the sandblaster and it's reasonable. I want to, I went on the internet and I looked, I, like I said a couple minutes ago, I wanted to replace all the sheet metal, a brand new sheet metal, aftermarket sheet metal. And then I've been reading a lot on the forums and everybody says the aftermarket sheet metal is junk unless you get like the really good stuff from like AMD or uh, National Parts Depot-ish, but then there's still some complaints with that stuff. And then there's always truck shipping. I was going to go, my buddy lives in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. I was going to go to CJ Pony Parts, has a CJ Classic Parts, where they have all the sheet metal for these trucks. They've got doors for like 600 bucks for a pair, fenders for like $350 a pair, hoods like $389. I was going to buy it all and to have him pick it up, and then I'd just pick it up from his house. But then I read CJ Pony Parts reviews of customer service and a bunch of other stuff, mostly Mustang parts, but I couldn't find any info on their truck parts. And they got horrendous customer service reviews and said some parts are junk and I was like I don't really want to spend $1,500 on new sheet metal and then find that it's garbage. So I'm really worried about aftermarket doors not fitting correctly up here and not having a glass fit in them and all that. Like I'm not as concerned about gaps like this isn't going to be a show truck and this is all factory sheet metal. Here you can see the gap now it gets tight here because somebody put cab corners in it and they screwed up the cab corner right here. I'm going to try to straighten that out, but it's close enough for what I'm doing, but I don't want an aftermarket door that's going to have like a half inch gap here. And then like, you know, this body line is a, is a, an inch low here or whatever. This line's off. Like, you know, I'm, I think I'm going to, these doors are solid enough where I just got to do work on the very bottom of them. The rest of the door, 
is straight. I got to weld up two holes here from these mirrors. So I'm going to go and stick with the factory doors. I think that's the best thing, get them blasted and media stripped and sandblasted. I ordered a skin for this one. Um, it's got a hole in it here, obviously, mudded over. So I ordered an outer skin uh, aftermarket, which is like $13. And the only reason I did is because I want, it's got a little bit of crown to it and a $13 panel. You know, I can, it'd be real easy to cut a patch out of that or put the whole skin on. This door is, the seam is fat here, so I might have some rust on the seam. Uh, this is, this is the worst of the two doors here. But everything else is, the doors are straight, the lines are straight, I don't see any damage in them. And I don't think there's filler in them back here, I think this is just a bubble here, and I can see it's bubbling here. So, if I can get away with fixing these factory doors, it'd be worth it. The front fenders, on the other hand, are going to come off. There's rust holes through on the backs of both fenders here, which are easily repaired. But then I found up here, there's pinholes here. I poked this one, it's through here. And pinholes on this side. So both front fenders have rust on the inside along here. This is starting to rust there. So by the time I get these blasted and stripped, it I can buy new fenders. I think aftermarket fenders, if the cab and everything fits good, I can get away with making the fenders fit because really only body line you got to worry about is right here. And if it's close and fit in the hood, but you know, in and out and stuff like that. You can see the gap's pretty big here. This is all factory. There's a big gap here. Like I said, I'm not building a, you know, what do you call it, like a Ken Diggett show truck. I like, if the gaps are wonky a little bit here and there, I don't really care. It's like it's a driver, don't care. The hood, uh, new hoods are like $400 to $600. I need a new hood. This one has got significant rot all through the front edge here. It's hard to see because the light's probably in your eyes, but all rotted out here, it's rotted out here. It's it's bubbling all across the front edge. It's been had some filler in it here already. So this is all rotted out. Um, so I'm gonna get a new hood. I got an eyeball on one on Facebook Marketplace, which I never actually bought anything off Marketplace ever before. And I've reached out to the person they're like a town away and they haven't got back to me yet, but they've got a hood and primer. So if I can go buy a $200 hood instead of a $400 hood, um, I'm going to keep this one, and I think I'm going to lay out my louvers on it. Sand the, what the something here. Oh, it's got DA marks on it where they DA'd it, and there's a dent here. Actually, I'm going to strip all this, strip all the paint off. I'm going to lay out my louvers, and I'm going to practice louvering this hood because I haven't really louvered any hoods by myself. I helped my dad years and years and years ago with a louver press. But this is a big hood, so I can try it, lay them out, get my layout, punch this hood full of louvers just, just to uh, do it. Yeah, you can hear all the rust in there. Oh, it's junk. So just a louver this one just to get, get the layout down, figure it out, and then uh, I won't ruin a good hood. So that's, that's the plan of the sheet metal. Um, I just did a big order. I use this company, uh, Raybach Auto Parts out of Pittsburgh. I've had good luck with their... Uh, mostly I've bought panels for like old body style Ford trucks. I bought their, and, oh actually my van too. I bought their floor pans and their rocker panels and stuff. And they fit, they, they, they're aftermarket, but they fit good. And they're reasonably priced. So I just went and ordered all the sheet metal. They actually had a code on their page. They screwed up their website uh, delivery, uh, what do you call it, checkout thing. And uh, so they had a 10% off code for saying everybody, thanks for everybody for sticking with them for a couple days, so they had a screwed up thing. So I actually ordered all the sheet metal and I got 10% off, which is great. So I ordered uh, front floor pans, front cab mounts, rear cab mounts, and then I ordered their professional grade, restoration grade floor pans, which are two pieces. There's a front, and I think the seam's right about here. There's a full floor pan all the way over, but it has the inner rocker attached to it, which I need on the passenger side. Then I ordered the rear outer piece, which is like, I think up to here, um, which has the rest of the rocker hooked to it. So I can replace all this floor in through here and the whole front floorboards. They get me new inner rockers. These rockers have been put in, as you can see, there's a seam here and a seam here, all buggered up. Somebody put these in, they didn't do a very good job. Both sides, they hit the doors on the bottom of the doors overhang. Boom, right here, the door, there's a non-existent door gap on the rocker. 
there. So I'm going to cut these out, put new rock and another set of rockers in them from Ray Buck. So that'll fix all the floor and the cab mounts. These cab corners were installed and they put them up here. They, this is where they come up to here and you can see the bubble and filler. So they replaced them all and it's, they can't see because of the gas tank, but they stepped the seam on the inside and it's rusting from the inside out. So I'm going to end up grinding the filler out of here and trying to clean it up the best I can and use some rust converter on it or maybe my little spot sandblaster. Then I'm going to use some uh, Duraglass waterproof filler and fill this in That's and, and clean the inside up so hopefully it won't rust again and I'm going to seam seal the inside. But these cab corners are installed and they're they're all solid underneath. There's nothing wrong with them. So there's no reason to put another set of cab corners in the cab. They've already done it. But I will uh, be cutting the rocker out here and doing the outer rockers, inner rockers, and the floorboards. And uh, I also ordered this panel here, which uh, the bottom of it looks like it's gone. They were, they were cheap. They were like 25 bucks. So I ordered those. Um, what else did I get? I ordered underneath here, if you can see, probably hard to see. Hold on. Underneath here, can you see it where the fender attaches? There's a bolt piece. I ordered that. You probably can't see it. And I ordered some inner structure piece behind there. Ordered it. Everything up. So that stuff's all coming in a couple days. Here's my plan. My plan is get this thing ready to disassemble, blow the front clip off it, take the box off, get the cab off. I got a trailer um, to set the cab on, bring it up in here, put it on some kind of dolly where I can, or actually leave it on that trailer frame maybe. But I got to get the cab mounts unsupported so I can change the cab mounts. Fix the cab. Oh, which one thing I didn't order is I didn't order that inner roof skin. I'm gonna, I ran out of money for right now, but I'll uh, do the bottom and then I'll do the top. I got to pull the windshield out and I get this piece uh, media stripped just because it's got lots of peeling paint and stuff on all these edges. It'd be really hard to clean this up. They can they can plastic strip this real fast with a media blaster, that cowl panel. And uh, get the whole truck disassembled, pull the engine transmission out, strip off the suspension, take the frame while I'm working on the cab. Uh, while I'm doing the cab floor, the frame and the doors will be at the, actually I need the doors to put the rockers in. Well, actually, I'm sorry. Strip it all apart, set the cab on the thing, start cutting getting the cab ready, uh, do the uh, start working on the floors and all that. I'll probably work, I'll probably leave the rockers in it for now, the, the mix match rockers, put the floor in it, and then I'll then that'll tie it back together. Then I'll cut the rockers out once I get the doors back from the media blaster. Uh, put them in primer, fix them, have the doors so I can line up the rocker panels to the doors. In the meantime, the frame will be blasted and primed. I'll paint the frame black, and then I'll order the new front control arms along with the lowering kit. While the truck's all apart, we'll shorten the frame with the frame kit that I ordered. We'll put the all-new front suspension on with a lowering kit. We'll put the rear springs and track bar in with a lowering kit. Make it back into a roller. The engine, I'm just going to clean it up real fast and like rattle can some new engine paint on it. It might need a valve cover gasket. But you can see it's a little scaly. I'll degrease it all and like try to mask it off and paint it up the best I could. Shoot that Chevy orange. Probably repaint the air cleaner. Um, these inner fenders, these are decent shape. They're just got a little bit of surface rust. So I'll clean up. Paint on black. The cab will get, I'm probably going to paint the top of the firewall uh, blue. And I'll probably paint uh, from that body line down satin black. The fender walls will be satin black. This will be satin black. I'll probably paint the fenders uh, here at this line. Body color on top and black on the bottom. The underside of the hood will be black. And then uh, just get all, you know, dressed up frame will be black. Then we can stick the cab on, put the engine transmission back in, get that lined up. Or actually, I'm sorry, well the the frame is all apart, run all new brake lines, new fuel lines and stuff like that. It needs all new, it needs all new brake lines and fuel lines. Run all that stuff, set the cab back on, paint the, jam the cab out, paint the inside of the cab, get it all ready, get the whole front of the truck reassembled. Um, I got to get a new bumper, get the grill ready. 
get the whole front of the truck ready for paint. And I'd like to get the thing, at least in primer, with the interior painted by maybe the end of the year. And in the meantime, I'm going to look for a step site box. But I at least want to get it in primer and back together and running and driving without a box on it. If I find a box in the meantime, I can work on that. But I want to get it all back together with no box, but shortened and lowered and functional and put the windshield back in. And then I can move it around under its own power again. Whew! Well, that's the plan. A lot of work. But parts are coming. I already blew the budget. I had to order, 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 order. So now, guys, you got to watch the video. Click, watch the ads. Click, tell your friends. Tell, Send it out to the C10 people. Going to need some people to watch this to get the, the bank account back up. So I got to buy a step side. Either the original one, which aren't cheap, or the reproduction panels, which are even less not cheap. Trying to do this truck for 10 grand. I get right now with the parts I got 40, I paid $4,500 for the truck. I got $1,300 in the suspension kit. So that's, and I got $350 in the frame kit. So $1,400, 60, what did I say? Hold on, let me write it down. Okay, I paid $4,500 for the truck. I got $1,300 in the suspension, which is uh, new front discs, new calipers, new uh, uprights, all four new springs, track bar, and miscellaneous parts, uh, $1,300. got $350 I paid for this, the frame shortening jig kit. got $500 in sheet metal for the cab. So I got $6,650 right now in parts and pieces. I had, need to add uh, three... 340 for the roof skin. I need to add probably two to 300 for a hood. We'll say we'll say 250 for a hood. Then there's going to be blasting and stuff and painting the frame. That's going to be in the doors. That's probably going to be $1,400. So now we're up to 14, uh, 7, 10, 6. Seven. Now we're up to 80, 8640 and then we're going to have to do miscellaneous stuff. We're going to need a, a bed. A bed is $2,600 in parts. So, uh oh, now we're up to, now we're up to $11,000 plus paint, $500 plus a windshield, $300. All right, I'm going to stop adding it up because now I'm getting nervous. We've already blown the budget, but... Maybe for $12,000. Oh, I still got to buy tires. Oh, no. And what else? Fenders. For under $15,000, we'll have a painted short box step side, all restored uh, Chevy C10 step side truck. You can't buy a restored one painted with all new, you know, fixed bodywork and, and new paint and a good interior and new tires and wheels and suspension. You can't buy one for $15,000. So I'm, uh, whew. All right, going to make out, but I don't have $15,000 right now. So go ahead and watch some videos. Go back in, there's 860 videos in the library. Go back just at, every night. Click the play button. Let them run at night. I need some re ad revenue so I can finish this truck. Because then I got my 58 Plymouth, and that's going to cost me a lot of money. Man. I better start playing the lottery. Anyways, that's it for now. <laughs> I better do something free for the rest of the day because I know I'm out of money. Thanks for watching. Next time we'll be working probably on the C10 again, I guess. And uh, we'll go from there. We'll see you then.